Welcome to workout from home number 27 here at the Four Bells Fitness Emporium and maybe even in your home too. Today it is leg day in the gym and we are looking at a big array of strength development skills for the lower body. We are going to look at some single limb unilateral work, we're looking at some hamstring work, posterior chain, we're looking at some isometrics, a whole bunch of different stuff going on with our strength piece today but before we get into that Let's talk about our warm-up. With our warm-up today, we have three different movements that we are looking at. We are looking at walking lunges, so we can try and prep the hips, get the hips nice and mobile, five reps per leg, 10 total. From there, we're getting into our inchworm to push-up, so trying to mobilize the hamstring and do a little extra push-up work in there for 10 reps, and then get the glutes activated for five reps per leg in a glute bridge. We are doing these three movements for three rounds. So when it comes to walking lunges, in an ideal world, we've got a bunch of space. We're in the gym, we can lunge up and down, we've got tons of room. But you may find yourself in a very small space, maybe even in your basement. If we can, when we're doing lunges, we always want the feet on train tracks, making sure I'm not on a tightrope and having balance issues. And I'm going to start by just taking a nice big step out. So as I step out and bring this knee to the floor, I'm looking to feel a slight stretch in those hip flexors. I want to keep the torso nice and vertical as I step out. Trying to make sure that I don't allow the chest to flop down towards the knee. If you have the space, feel free to do your walking lunges up and down. And if you don't, you can just do them in space and that's pretty good too. From there, into our inch one to push up. All I'm looking to do is stretch those hamstrings. So I'm going to start by bringing the hands down onto the floor, walk the hands out, do a push up. And then from there, walk the hands back in. We walk the hands out. Do a push up, big stretch of the hamstring as we walk the hands in. We'll be doing 10 of those. Last but not least, it is a glute bridge. I'm going to lay down on the floor. I'm going to take one of my legs, point it up to the ceiling, drive the hips up, squeeze the glutes, hold for a second, relax down, drive the foot up, squeeze the glutes. We'll be doing those for five per side. So, Walking lunges, 10 reps, five per leg. We're then gonna do 10 inchworm to push-ups, and then five per leg of a glute bridge. Three rounds in the warm-up today. In our strength piece for workout from home number 27, we have slightly longer working sets than we normally do. We have five sets to do, and each set is four and a half minutes long. That four and a half minute window is split into three 90 second periods of time. So in each of these three stations, I'm gonna to get to do that work in 90 seconds. So just to clarify, for some people who get this a little bit off, I'm not trying to do all three in 90 seconds. That's madness. You've got 90 seconds to do each one of these. So in my first 90 seconds, I'm gonna do eight reps per leg of a Bulgarian split squat. We're gonna talk about how to do that in another second. With the Bulgarian split squat, one of the big issues for a lot of people is balance. So before we even think about trying to increase load, is do I feel good with just body weight first of all? And if flexibility in the hips is an issue, that could play a big factor. So we'll talk about that in a second. From there, we're gonna get into some kind of hamstring curl for 15 reps. And it's gonna depend on what you have available to you. Do you have rings or a TRX? Do you have a Swiss ball? Do you have shiny laminate floor? Either of those could be a potential option for you to do some kind of hamstring curl today. Last but not least, a nice little isometric for the quads and for the glutes. We're going to do a wall sit for somewhere between 30 to 45 seconds. I've written 30 because I'm feeling nice, but 45 is really what we should be aiming for if we can. So let's talk about Bulgarian split squats. The Bulgarian split squat or sometimes commonly known as the rear foot elevated split squat. Mm, so wordy and delicious. It's a great exercise because it not only helps us to work on unilateral or single limb strength, but also build flexibility and active ranges of mobility at the same time. How do I get into Bulgarian split squat? Ideally, I have something to rest my foot on, and the height of that object is really going to depend on your ability to, to perform the movement. Obviously, the higher the object, you have to have your foot higher and higher and crazy gymnastic level hip flexibility. So be careful, guys. I would say nothing higher than the knee, and if anything, go a little bit lower than go too high. 
When I come to set up, it's quite straightforward. I need to be about the length of my shin away from the bench. And the way for me to do that is approximately three feet lengths. And I should be able to step back and rest my toe on the bench or the box or the stair, wherever it is. That split position in the turn, split squat, means that I'm looking to extend this hip, my left hip, as I flex the right hip. So essentially like a strength piece with the splits involved. I'm not going to let the knee come to the floor, I'm going to push the knee back. So when I drive the knee back towards the bench, making sure I mobilize, open and close the hip simultaneously, keeping that hip, sorry, the hip, the chest, nice and high throughout. If balance is not an issue, you can hold on to one dumbbell, you can hold on to two dumbbells, you can hold a kettlebell in a goblet squat position, find what works best for you. The Bulgarian split squat is eight reps per leg. Hi guys, hamstring curls here. We are looking to do 15 hamstring curls, whether I'm using a TRX or rings or a Swiss ball or socks on a slippery floor, we're gonna do some kind of hamstring curl. So I'm using the TRX here. You can use rings, it will do the same thing, but the rings of course may be made of wood or plastic and they could dig into your Achilles. So bear that in mind, if you need to pad it out somehow, pad it out. From here, when it comes to our hamstring curl, what I'm looking to do is bridge the hips up. I'm then gonna pull the heels into the bum and straighten the legs out. Pull the heels in, curl the hamstring, and straight back out. From here, when it comes to doing it, can I get out this smoothly? I think I can. If I wanna do the same thing, it can also be done on a Swiss ball. Pretty much the same setup. Feet are around 18 inches to two feet from the floor. I bridge up, hips high, curl the feet in, bringing the heels to the bum, keeping those glutes engaged as I pull the heels in, curling the hamstring. So, let's talk about one more option of what you can do if you have laminate or hardwood flooring. Guys, I know I'm laying on the floor outside the shower rooms at the gym, but this is to demonstrate what you can do if you have socks and some kind of slippery floor if you want to do hamstring cuts. So, all I need to do is have my feet set up like I would do in a normal hamstring setup. I'm going to use my hands here on this door just to bolster myself, but I can drive the elbows into the floor, of course, as well. I'm going to start with the heels close to the bum, bridge up, and then straighten out the legs, pull the heels in. Straighten out the legs, pull the heels into the bum. Always trying to keep those hips up, trying to keep the hamstrings engaged. If you have something that can go under your feet, if you have sliders available, maybe even like a tray, a dinner tray, I don't know if those still exist anymore, I remember having those when I was a kid, but something that could slide on carpet or hardwood as well, you can still do hamstring curls. The wall sit, thighs parallel to the floor, back against the wall, we're not slouching forwards, I want to make sure that I'm keeping a nice amount of tension through the quadricep and I'm not doing sneaky sliding up or down the wall. I don't want to put my hands on the wall, death grip, all I need to do is avoid putting the hands on the legs, putting the hands on the walls. I can just chill with the arms crossed, hands behind the head, wiggle your fingers, whatever makes you feel good. With the wall squat, sorry, wall sit, it is gonna be 45 seconds every single time, but maybe 30 if you're having a tough time. I'm looking to ignore 30, 45 seconds. Conditioning piece. Today we have a 15 minute AMRAP, 900 seconds of joy. Do you know what an AMRAP means? What well, AMRAP means as many rounds or reps as possible, depending on the, what the workout details. Today's is all about rounds. We have three movements, which equal one round. And we're trying to do as many rounds as possible within that 15 minute window. So what are we looking at the first? First, we are looking at the overhead squat, which we're going to be doing for 10 reps. We'll talk about the benefits of the overhead squat before we start in a second. From there, we're going to get into 20 kettlebell swings. Ideally, 20 unbroken or non-stop reps. I don't want to do 10 reps, take a little break, do another 10. I want to be a challenging kettlebell for that 20 reps in a row. And last but not least, some kind of aerobic piece. So it says here, 200 meters. So the easiest way to do 200 meters would be to run away from my house for 100 meters, turn around, and run back. If it's not easy for you to get out of the house, maybe you're in a condo, but you have like a rowing machine or a ski erg available, then it could be 200 meters on those machines. 
If you have a machine that only records calories, we can maybe do 20 calories instead of 200 meters. And if none of that is available, then it could be something like jumping jacks for 50 reps. Of course, if you're not sure what to do, send us a little message and we will, of course, advise you. When it comes to the overhead squat, there's a few options you should be thinking about. Now, the overhead squat is a fantastic diagnostic tool of general mobility throughout the whole body, which is why it's a great movement to do light, but it's not the most efficient strength development tool. If you're wondering why that is, send us a message and we'll tell you. Well, I would imagine most people at home have some kind of stick available. At the gym, we have PVC pipes. You might have a broom handle, whatever it happens to be. And if you find that you don't have any of this, even holding a bag or a rope or anything overhead could help with your overhead squat. When I set up for the overhead squat, how do I set up? It's quite straightforward. If I've got a stick, put it into the crease of my hip. From here, I extend the arms out until those elbows are locked out and I stand back up. I bring my PVC pipe overhead and I'm thinking about not pressing the weight up, but I'm letting the weight sink down so my shoulders are pushed into the shoulder socket and I'm squeezing the shoulder blades together, creating a nice base of support for the upper body. From here, I find that when people set up for their overhead squat, because they know now I need to compensate for the upper body, people will start doing a new crazy squat stance that they never did before. We need to make sure that is not the case. I need to make sure my squat stance is exactly where it would normally be. Not only do I initiate with the hips now, I allow the chest to come through slightly, pushing the hips back, we allow the chest to come through, we come down to the bottom of that squat and stand back up. We are gonna do 10 overhead squats. If you are at home with a barbell available, feel free to use an empty barbell. This movement is not supposed to be super heavy. All we're trying to do is work on squatting mechanics whilst also working on a little bit of general full body mobility. From there, as we get into our kettlebell swing, hinging mechanics are primary, of course, which means if you're looking at me profile, I should be closing the hip, loading the hamstring, loading the glute, glutes, nice neutral spine. From here, I'm gonna drive the hips forward, squeeze the glutes, engage the quads, brace the abs. Those are those three points of engagement I wanna be thinking. I set my feet back, triangulate the position between the kettlebell handle and my toes, pull into the hips, and we snap forwards. Glutes engaged, quads engaged, abs braced for 20 kettlebell swings. From there, we get into our aerobic piece, run, row, ski, jumping jacks. We are repeating 10 overhead squats, 20 kettlebell swings, that 200 meter aerobic piece, round and round and round we go for 15 minutes.